morning. It's Monday, May 25th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, When Your Taste Buds Change, and our scripture is 1 Peter chapter 4. So then, since Christ suffered physical pain, you must arm yourselves with the same attitude he had, and be ready to suffer too. For if you have suffered physically for Christ, you have finished with sin. You won't spend the rest of your lives chasing your own desires, but you'll be anxious to do the will of God. You have had enough in the past of the evil things that godless people enjoy, their immorality and lust, their feasting and drunkenness and wild parties, and their terrible worship of idols. Of course, your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild and destructive things they do, so they slander you. But remember that they will have to face God who stands ready to judge everyone, both the living and the dead. That is why the good news was preached to those who are now dead. So although they were destined to die like all people, they now live forever with God in the Spirit. When I was a child, there was one thing that was never going to enter my mouth. And for those of you who know me well, this is many years before my first experience with the much-despised okra. Having been raised in the Northeast, I was an adult having ventured into the foreign country of Augusta, Georgia, before being inducted into the I Hate Okra Hall of Fame. No, my childhood archenemy was asparagus. Oh man, the battle is between my stubbornness and Dad's request that I at least try it. Somewhere between preschool days and the birth of our first child, asparagus was strangely removed from the CDC warnings of dangerously toxic things to ingest. Actually, I'm pretty sure I recall being at a friend's house and the dreaded green spears were disguised. They were covered with cheese sauce and I ate the stuff by mistake. I once had another friend tell me he was certain I'd eat a live roach if it was covered in any kind of cheese. Despite green, worm-like veggies under the good stuff, it was good. But I digress. In some unknown twist of the astrological forces of nature, my taste buds had changed. For some unknowable, unexplainable, but entirely enjoyable reason, asparagus drenched in melted cheese tasted like dessert. Who knew? The final chapter on okra, for me, is yet to be written, but I suspect it'll drop below freezing in Hades for an extended period of time before you see me reach for the little gooey pods. I do not like veggies you eat with a straw. In fact, it's written in my last will and testament that if I die suddenly, there's to be an autopsy to rule out that it wasn't some kind of foul play by someone high on okra. So, on a 1 to 10 scale of things, I love hate... It's asparagus 9.2 and okra minus 1,000. And so, what does any of this have to do with Peter's taste buds? Well, the big fisherman had discovered something about placing his faith in Jesus Christ. His taste for the former life had changed. The things that he hated before, accountability to God, serving instead of being served, giving instead of getting, And a whole list of other okra-like torture had become dessert. And it didn't even irk him, not one single bit, that his former friends didn't understand and had unfriended him like a hot potato Facebook troll. Peter's taste buds had developed a hunger and thirst for righteousness and living the abundant, changed life in Christ. Now... If you've become a follower of Jesus and that miraculous change of taste buds doesn't describe your experience, let me tell you from where I sit, that doesn't usually happen in a flash. Sometimes the development of taste buds changing from lust to respect, drunkenness to standing up straight, and not throwing up all over yourself the next morning or insisting on having everything your way or whining about all the stuff your neighbors got that you don't, Well, that is a reconstruction project that's bigger in some than others. It was in me, and I suspect you're not a whole lot different. Let's pray. Father, we're glad the reconstruction project is underway in our lives. We'd rather have it go into effect yesterday so that we don't have so much struggle. 
But we also remember the surrendered life is not complete without surrendering to your will, which is like your ways, higher, and your thoughts, more complete than ours. Help us to hang in with your plan for our taste buds. For you today, remember the old song, He's still working on me to make me what I need to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be, because he's still working on me. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.